So, I grabbed my 10 inch box. There's a ton of 10 inch Sinatra in here, but I don't wanna just focus on that. I'm gonna go through essentially what I have. So, the first thing to start out with, this is a really nice record. It's volume three. I listened to this uh, yesterday. It's, it's, it's nice, I mean, it's, it was recorded in I think 44 or 45. Um, so it sounds as such, but it's really nice record. Um, these go for quite a bit. I bid on these often. Um, I usually don't get them, but I did get this one. It's in good condition. And what's kind of cool about this is that it has the blank back. So I think it just means it's an early pressing on Savoy. So that's kind of a cool one. All right. I've shown this before on the channel. It's Barney Kessel. This is a contemporary, deep groove, all that good stuff. Um, nice record. Got it from Jazz Record Center down in New York City in uh, was it 27th and 9th or something like that. Uh, this is the Sam Records release, uh, Miles Davis. This is great. Really nice. I don't listen to this enough. Maybe I'll put it on tonight, but super happy I have it. Um, early Miles. Uh, Barney Wyland's on this. I, you know, great European. Uh, or French uh, jazz saxophonist, so that's a cool one. Then I got Stan Gets Plays. Um, this is on Clef Records, which is the Norman Grands uh, record label, but beautiful. Look at that. You see my reflection in it. So nice. <laughs> and then I recently got this. Uh, I think I got it for like five bucks or something, but this is, uh, this is my only Sidney Bechet record. Uh, this is a, a soundtrack to a movie, but it's a 10 inch on Vogue, uh, pressed in France. So I listened to it yesterday. It sounds like, um, what is it? Uh, uh, Dixieland. It sounds a little Dixieland-ish, so it's not like really the best, but it's cool to have and it's a 10 inch on Vogue, so cool. All right, and then this I got actually for free. They threw this in because I was telling the uh, the folks at uh, Jazz Vinyl Cafe in in Fairfield, Connecticut. Uh, I was buying something else, and I was just like, "Yeah, let me get this." And they just were like, "All right, you can have it for free." So it's this weird Parlophone. Um, it's a British uh, thing. You can tell that they cut in crowd applause in the beginning. They do like an intro to each song, and then they play. But again, this is very much like a big band kind of thing. Um, not the, not the the coolest music, but you know, Parlophone 10 inch you know, from that mid fifties time period. I mean, I love that. Okay. Now we're getting into the Frank stuff. So we got the Tommy Dorsey. This was a 78, um, album or yeah, album with multiple 78s. Uh, this is the 10 inch, uh, released much later, um, like years later. Uh, but it's got Frank on vocal refrain for a few of these tracks. Let's see what we got. Um, Stardust, we got I'll Never Smile Again, I'm Getting Sentimental Over You. This is a killer record. Um, I got this, I think I got it for super cheap, and I saw Frank was on it, so I was like, cool. And um, really, I've, I've spun that numerous times. My dog's getting crazy right now. Let's see if we can get him over here. Get him, Rem! Oh yeah! Okay. All right, let's keep going. I won't show all the Frank 10 inch because I have a lot of Frank 10 inch, but I'll show some some cool ones. So this is, you know, classic. This is the first LP on Columbia. It's a uh, 6001. Six really indicating that it's a, a pop record. I think, you know, that um, uh, prefix number is, uh, you know, indicative of if it's classical or, or whatever. So this is the voice. Uh, on Columbia, really nice condition, great to have, um, you know, classic record. Then we have some early stuff, let me see, let me see, I'll quickly go through this, I'll just kind of show them quickly. So we have Songs by Sinatra on Columbia, we have uh, Frankly Sentimental, this one's good, this one has a, let's see. I mean, it has um, one for my baby, the Columbia version, which is very different than the one everyone knows on Capitol. But it just goes to show you, like for Capitol, he did so many songs that he already had done for uh, for uh, Columbia, and uh, this one's really good. Um, I would recommend this one. You know, 
thing is with the early Columbia stuff, if you're not like a, a Frank Francophile or whatever, um, you may not dig it, but uh, that one that one's pretty good. Um, we got Sing and Dance, so Impex uh, recently reissued this one. This is the the OG 10 inch. The Impex one sounds incredible. Definitely get that if you can. Um, and this one is uh, this is kind of when he was like falling off at Columbia, and he wasn't selling too much. Um, dedicated to you. It's still on that red label. And then I got some comps. I got oh, this Christmas one. Um, this one's pretty cool. Pull that out for the holidays. This one's really good. It's got a ridiculous cover, but the songs on this are very different. Um, he has like uh, some kind of like almost like rock songs on it. And then now we move into Columbia, which is the ultimate Frank. Actually, there's some other. I have some capital uh, compilations, but let's move into Columbia. So this one I've shown before. This is great. The voice is beautiful. Um, first with Riddle, 1954. Then uh, this is like 54, 55, Swing Easy. This isn't as good as this one, but it's got a killer cover. <laughs> but it's okay. But I mean, there's some cheese on this for sure. I mean, the thing with Frank is there's there's cheese. I mean. He has song, you know, like We Small Hours. I mean, that whole album's great. Songs for Swingin' Lovers. You know, there's some cheese on there. Like, what is it? Um, Making Whoopie. I actually really like that song, but the lyrics are ridiculous. I mean, come on, Making Whoopie. So anyway, so there's a Jeepers Creepers on this. I mean, you know, so you gotta, you gotta understand the time period and and you know they were throwing a bunch of stuff out. And then I have uh, the 10 inch album two. This is a UK pressing. Uh, I don't have the, the first album, but this is We Small Hours. It sounds okay, but honestly, I've done a shootout between an OG, uh, 1955, this one from 1955, UK Press, and the, and the modern one. That's probably cut from digital, and that modern one is awesome. The separation of his voice in the orchestra, the way I describe it is like, if you see, like, uh, uh, think of it like a film noir like Casablanca, how, like, when you look at... Um, in Ingrid Bergman, when when she's on screen and her kind of face is like blended, like it's a softness that, that's there. The original pressing of We Small Hours is like that, where it's like there's a blending of the instruments that feels like that. And then the modern reissue that you can get now, it separates everything perfectly. So I feel like for a modern ear, that sounds better, but I feel like we Small Hours, the OG one, is more along the lines of like that, you know, Bogart, nu Noir kind of thing, which is kind of cool. So, all right, let me see what else I got here. Uh, all right, I'll just quickly round it out. I mean, I have some comps. Let me just show these really quick. So, this is I've Got a Crush on You, Frank, Columbia. This is a comp. I got this RCA Victor. This is another Dorsey comp with... Frank on a lot of these, hence his face on the front. It's a European Phillips killer. Uh, this is probably my favorite label. I have a Sam Records and I have a, a Duke Ellington, but I mean, this Phillips Microgroove label, I mean, look at that. The detail, I love it. So anyway, this is, a, this is another um, compilation. What do we got on it? Blue Skies, When You're Awake. Why Don't You Behave, This Song's For You, Laura, uh, Why Was I Born, I Don't Stand a Ghost of a Chance, uh, and the music stops, so it's okay, okay, you know, it's fine, whoop, all right, and then I think somebody sent this to me when I got another 10-inch record, this Patty Page, I don't even know, I think I listened to it once, I, I don't know anything about it, so I haven't listened to that, but it's a 10-inch, so I love it, I got this, I don't know how to pronounce it, Zatabe. Um, this is like a Mayan or Incan or something like that. And I've listened to this once and I actually really thought it was kind of cool. It was very different. And then I do have a collection of field recordings. This is a 10 inch bird songs and this is from the Cornell laboratory. Um, they have an ornithology laboratory or they, you know, they did that used to put out recordings and these are really cool. They'll just go through and they'll just say the name of the bird, where it was located and, and they'll play it. And honestly, my wife loves birding, so these, that's the reason why I have this, but you know, these are kind of cool just to throw on, uh, you know. And then finally, I have this uh, 78 
This is a this is a Frank Sinatra, uh, all or nothing at all. So there was a musician strike, or something like that. And uh, anyway, this is a reissue during the musician strike when nobody could record because the recording artist or the artist didn't want to record because they felt like their music would be stolen. Kind of like a Napster kind of deal in terms of like modern um, musicians kind of opposing a new format. Um, so they did that and uh, so they went back to their back catalog, they released this. I, I think it's a Dorsey, Sinatra, and, uh, and it was a huge hit in the early 40s when that was going on. So I have that, and uh, I haven't played it because my record player doesn't play 78s, but I just like to have it for archival purposes. But yeah, those are my 10 inches. So let me know what you think. Uh, and yeah, talk to you guys later.